Hello everybody, my name is David Watts, and I've been invited by that goddess of Wednesday night poetry, Kai Coggin, to read a few poems for you. Delighted to do it. So this alley we're in, you might be able to tell by hearing some sounds of the city, that we're in a vibrant, active city, San Francisco to be exact. Barbary Coast, Film Noir Mysteries, San Francisco Renaissance, beat poetry, hippie poetry. Just a tiny bit of that poetry in this city I made. So I'm going to read a few things for you today. But we're in difficult times right now. And I think all the people who are reading today probably had to think about that when they picked their poems. So I picked some that are about loss. But I also picked some about celebration about the resiliency of the human spirit, which I think we need and provides a little balance to what I'm planning to do. So I put together a little collection, but there's a trick. We're gonna to go to different locations to hear these poems. Ready to do a little traveling? Here we go. So here we are at the beach at the Pacific Ocean with the sound of waves in the background and the occasional foghorn. I've come here to talk about a place north of here called Jenner, Jenner by the Sea, where the Russian River empties out onto a beach there, and it brings these stones, these rocks, that it has quarried out of the side of the mountain on the way down to the river mouth. And we went there collecting but it was also a form of transition for me, of acknowledgement of how difficulties in the past can actually lead to good things in the future. It's called Jenner Stones. At Jenner by the Sea, we scurry over boulders to the place where the breakers bear down, the edge where rub and thrust rinses everything finally clear. It has taken a long time to get here, past failures at love, at marriage, but sometimes, after all, there is an accident of grace. We are cautious and treasure everything in our tennis shoes. We teeter over the runnels that rush between footings, in which, emptied by the gasp and suck of the sea collapsing back, we find these small stones we came for, Freshettes of color, like floral nuggets compressed to their smallest hardness. Jadeite, feldspar, and the one with the orange mango cloud marbling through it like a fossilized sunset. We cannot know where they came from, though we imagine an ancient vein glowing under a billion years of sediment somewhere up the Russian River. A cliff quarried by the current's constant fingers, then fanned from the river's mouth and tossed on this beach like jewel stones left by a passing goddess. I press them between my thumb and forefinger. It may not be so bad to go on for years with nothing happening, nothing but the downward heft of sediment. And then this blossom. Okay, now a little surprise for you. I am going to switch identities. Okay, so I think that deserves a little explanation. This is my alter ego, Harvey Ellis. And a few years ago, I decided I was tired of writing just narrative poetry and I wanted something wild and irreverent and crazy, quirky. And so I started experimenting around with a hypnagogic state, you know, between wakefulness and sleep maybe to mine a little bit of that unconscious stream that runs below. And what it produced was something unusual. And so I put some together, gave it a name of Harvey Ellis, Harvey for my father's first name, Ellis for my mother's maiden name. And here's some for you. Beware. The Round Threshold. As he woke, his mind unbent, like the direction of light coming out of water, 
straight was still straight, but flowed from a different point. He could feel the weight of it shift, like the weight of water in an airless tube. Even memory inclined another direction. Reaching back, the image was still there, but different, like the rocks on the bottom of a pond had moved, yet still where they were. Geese. My children have risen from me, like geese to their perfect path. They soar and tilt against the current, without effort visible from the ground. I am struck by their beauty, how they know so easily the motions to carry them over mountains, how they seem to need no apology, how I want to give them one. Gladly. Crumple me under you, she said, and I did, drawing her hips and elbows to the space I was lying on. It felt like nature moving with all its rare purpose through my sad room, skin the smooth we imagined, and submission a trough to fall into. Okay, so recently I've been experimenting with a little haiku. I know, it's a difficult thing to write as I am learning. Somehow when you are dealing with 17 syllables and less, makes you get rid of all that extraneous stuff. Nothing but the bare essentials. So, I collected six haiku for you. Here they are. Brittle wood, broken step, sudden gravity. The nightingale flies away. His last song drifts among the branches. How nervous it looks, shimmering, the aspen. Hot sun. Wipers sweeping ash, forests crying. The ant runs this way, runs that, and this way. Make up your mind. In my head, the songs he liked to sing, My Brother's Grave. And now we come all the way back to the narrative poem. For this, I take you to a hillside overlooking the Pacific Ocean. So here we are looking down on Stinson Beach. And I'm going to read a poem about my father, and then maybe one about my son. And it's in this book, Having and Keeping, which was put out by Brick Road Poetry Press. The poem is entitled, Words. My father used few words. He moved fearless from task to task, as if they were meals to be eaten. Our house grew ingle nooks from the imagination of the carpenter he became. From tree limbs of summer, I watched him tote and saw, driving nails with the same muscles that lost baseballs over West Texas outfields. Leaves turned, snow fell, all that whiteness came. Standing in the emptiness of transition, he spoke imploring wisdom. Then, when the inkwell went dry, he reached with great and somber hands to turn out the light. So that poem and this next one 
We're one of those rare moments when a poem comes fully formed to you. I think it must come out of the unconscious or somewhere else in the universe, perhaps, where it's always been made, already been made, and comes to you in a moment. My son brings me a stone and asks which star it fell from. He is serious, and so I must be careful. Even though I know he will place it among those things that will leave him someday, and he will go on gathering. For this is one of those moments that turns suddenly towards you, opening as it turns. As if for an instant, we paused on the edge of a heartbeat and then pressed forward, conscious of the fear that runs beside us and how lovely it is to be with each other in the long, resilient mornings. Well, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. And yes, of course, I have a book, one for David Watts, Having and Keeping, one for Harvey Ellis, Sleep, Not Sleep, and of course, I always want to thank our organizational genius, Kai Coggin, for making all this possible. Be well, everybody. May the muse be with you. <laughs>